Continuing our study in systematic theology, the conclusion of lesson number 24, the doctrine concerning backsliding. In part one, we saw how David became complacent and fell into a backslidden condition. He was in this place for around a year or more until Nathan confronted him, causing David to repent and resume his walk with the Lord. We see how Solomon backslid, realized the folly of his ways, and although scripture seems to indicate he never turned again fully back to God, he did have a, a do as I say, not as I do moment. Sinning and backsliding are two different things. You can backslide without sinning by just becoming complacent. David's backsliding did not begin when he slept with Bathsheba. It didn't even begin when he witnessed her. It began when he was not where he was supposed to be out at a time when kings went forth to go to battle. That was when his backsliding began. The sinning will come into play soon enough as you lose your moral compass by drifting away from God. But you can sin without backsliding. We all sin each and every day. But our daily prayers that include asking God to forgive our failures, this allows us to keep walking with Him. The difference between the two, the difference between sinning and backsliding, is attitude. Now that we spent a little time being hard on royalty, Let's look at some Old and New Testament questions concerning defying God on a daily continuance, where this can lead, and how we can recover from doing such. Question number eight. Do the Lord's people backslide? The lost cannot backslide, plain and simple. Backsliding is pulling in defiance against your master or your owner. The lost do not recognize God as their Lord or master. Their rebellious defiance is just their default nature. Despite what anyone may have told you, God is not their father. He is their creator, and most of those that are lost even deny that. What does Jesus say concerning the universal fatherhood of God? John chapter 8, beginning of verse 42, Jesus said unto him, If God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. With no relationship to God, sinners cannot backslide. That being the case, only the saved can backslide, because they recognize God as their master, even when they don't live that perception in their lives. It is when that awareness fails that backsliding occurs. Do the Lord's people backslide? Jeremiah 14, 7. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. Question number nine. Can a church backslide? The book of Revelation, in its second of three sections, as recorded in Revelation 119, which is the things which are, we see seven letters to seven literal churches. Five of those letters address problems the churches were experiencing. Ephesus had left its first love. This is backsliding by indifference. They'd lost their passion. Pergamos had members holding to the doctrine of Balaam, who was a prophet, out to make a prophet, and was a thorn in the side of the Israelites. He was actually paid to curse Israel. These Balaamites brought about feasts, including food sacrificed to idols and sexual indecencies. Combined with a hierarchy of the church being changed, this is Nicolaitans, this church had backslidden. In Thyatira, a Jezebel is mentioned, and the sins of Pergamos were occurring there as well, fornication and eating food sacrificed to idols. Here, members were backsliding, but not the entirety of the church. Sardis is told that their works were not perfect before God. Laodicea was so backslidden that it made God sick, and that's saying a lot. Can a church backslide? Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Revelation chapter 3, 15 and 16. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. 
I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Question number 10. With what is a backslider filled? Backsliding is rejecting the Lord's authority in your life. It is one's desire to answer to oneself, to be one's own boss. Backsliders make their own rules. They are filled with an overabundance of self-worth. There's a Greek word for this. The English word for I, in its most emphasized form, is the Greek word ego. And that's what backsliders are filled with, ego. With what is a backslider filled? Proverbs 14.14 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Question 11. Can backsliding corrupt a Christian? Backsliding is to the soul what cancer is to the body. With cancer, it often starts out as a single cell doing something it wasn't designed to do, mutate. Usually when this happens, the cell just dies. But in cancer, it survives and divides, carrying the mutation into the newly formed cells. If left unnoticed, it can begin to affect the areas around it as these cells begin to produce offspring cells at a much faster rate than normal cells. Left untreated, cancer spreads and will eventually decimate the body until it kills it. Backsliding begins with a single sin because of a bad decision or a bad attitude. When ignored, one sin can lead to another, and with each sin that's ignored, it becomes easier and easier to do. Clouding the soul until their walk with God has ended as the Holy Spirit continues to try convicting the backslider. Just as spouses can learn to ignore each other in time, I'll never know how that works, backsliders can learn to ignore Him, the Holy Spirit. They become miserable people. If you know a backslider who isn't miserable, they probably aren't a backslider, and someone who loves them needs to question them concerning their salvation. Lovingly at first, and more confrontationally at later, if they seem to ignore the first method. Whereas treating cancer isn't easy on the body, it usually zaps strength and stamina, the cure for backsliding is a confession to God through Jesus. The backslider will be restored, but may suffer spiritual scar tissue. Remember, David repented, but his son was taken from him. God forgives, but he punishes as well. Was Solomon punished? His punishment went way beyond himself. Only two kings ruled over united Israel in their entire reign, Kings Saul and Solomon. Solomon's backsliding resulted in the lasting split of Israel into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah, another proof that one person's sin can affect others. Now just as cancer degrades and devastates the body because of the physical corruption it causes, a backslider experiences the same corruptions in his or her soul. Can backsliding corrupt a Christian? 2 Corinthians 11.3 But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The Greek word here is apo, and in case there's confusion on this, it could also mean a departure from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's not talking about the simplicity of Christ being corrupted, it's talking about us being corrupted. Question 12. Can backsliding cost a Christian his salvation? Backslidden life is a wasted life. Our examination of Solomon demonstrated that. God can use the lost. He told Habakkuk that he was preparing the Chaldeans, a heathen people, because of the failings of the Israelites. He can obviously use the same followers, but he cannot use backsliders. Of course he could, but he won't violate their free will. When Nathan told David that he wouldn't die, he was speaking of his physical life. God would have killed David if he didn't repent, but this was again just a physical death, not a spiritual one. We are not the keepers of our own salvation, and I thank God for that, because I've lost keys, wallets, glasses, tie clips, phones, more pens than I could ever count, cars and parking lot, flashlights, money, and ask my wife, she probably has another list to add to that. All these are physical things, material items I can touch, hold, and see, and still lose. My spirit and soul are not physical objects. I possess them without ever touching them, without ever seeing them. If it were possible to lose my spirit, how would I know? 
It's not like I can see that it's not there. Where are the scriptures that tell us what to do once we've lost our salvation? How do we find the spirit that we've lost again? If this were a legitimate doctrine, God would have told us what we had to do, yet he didn't, and for very good reason. Jesus is the chief shepherd. Sheep don't watch themselves, and if they were to try, you'd find they do a very poor job. They're unable to defend themselves, they have no sense of direction, they are easily upset, and they can only outrun plants and some snails. Why does Jesus call himself the Good Shepherd in John 10 and 14? Why does the writer of Hebrews call him the Great Shepherd in Hebrews 13 and 20? Why does Peter call him the Chief Shepherd in 1 Peter 5 and 4? Because Jesus, as our shepherd, is our keeper, and what he is keeping is our salvation. Can backsliding cost a Christian his salvation? John 10, verses 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Question 13. Will all backsliders return to the fold? We should all thank God that salvation is eternal. The writer of the book of Hebrews used this phrase, something ignored by those who think that we can lose our salvation. Hebrews 5, 9 tells us, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. The Greek word here for eternal, ionios, which means perpetual, everlasting, eternal, or forever. The Greek word for salvation is soteria, meaning Literally, salvation, rescue, deliverance, or saving. There's not a lot of misinterpretation you can put there to those two, but obviously some people have figured out how. It is this guarantee that promises that no matter how far anyone backslides, they are still the Lord's own. Even the stubborn, unrepentant, yet saved backslider will still have a home in glory. And believe it or not, this actually upsets some people. They say that this isn't fair. Just remember that fair is a relative term, and if we all got what we deserved, we would all prefer mercy to fairness. Will all backsliders return to the fold? Psalm 37, beginning of verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Question 14. Why would someone leave but not return to the fold? The Catholics, including their near kin religions, some quasi Christian cults, and even some of the Protestants have lied to their followers about how to attain salvation. Because of this, there are many people who faithfully attend worship services that are bound for hell, and they do not even know that. This is why we should never forsake witnessing to these people, even if they fight us on every issue concerning that. These people cannot backslide because they were never the Lord's people. Some might be very dedicated to Him, but when they fall away into sinful lives, the Holy Spirit isn't there to convict them. Matthew chapter 7, beginning of verse 22, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful things. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So mentioned before, if you know someone who seems to have lost their faith, ceased being a disciple, or plain and simply backslidden, and appears to be comfortable in this new lifestyle as if their time of active service to God never happened, we must fear for their soul. It won't be a comfortable conversation. But remember the first rule of witnessing, prayer. Then there's the second rule, pray some more. As Nathan was David's last chance to avoid physical death for his backsliding, we might be someone's last chance to avoid their spiritual death by just plain and simply thinking they are saved. Why would someone leave but not return to the fold? 1 John 2, 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Question 15. Does Paul speak of any fallen from grace? The churches of Galatia were on the other side of the spectrum from the church of Corinth. Both churches had issues. 
For Corinth was carnal, the Galatians were legalist, believing that the Mosaic law had to be kept as part of salvation. At this point, the Torah was all the scripture they had to go with, and the Jews of the churches in Galatia had convinced the Gentiles that basically they had to follow the laws given to Moses by God. And Paul reminded them the purpose of the law, to convict of sin. The law defined what sin was, as well as how it was impossible to keep the law. This defined everyone as sinners. Luckily, the law defined what was required to cover sin. Then Paul explained grace and its purpose. Where the law defined and convicted of sin, grace gives us victory over it as it breaks the chains of sin and bondage. Paul then explains that if following the law can get us into heaven, that grace wasn't necessary. Does Paul speak of any fallen from grace? Galatians 5 and 4. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Let's look at that answer in a little more detail. With the last question, is anyone justified by the law? Salvation's plan has never changed. Under the law, everything pointed to Jesus. Those under the law knew that one day their kinsman redeemer would come. Their salvation did not come by keeping the law. No one can fully keep the law. Salvation came by the looking forward to the promise of the Messiah, who would be both their sacrificial goat and their scapegoat. While we accept by faith that the events in the Bible did happen, they accepted by faith that the events recorded in the Bible would happen. We believe grace did occur. They believe that grace would occur. So both Testaments sent believers to heaven based on grace through faith. It was never about the law, which is so much more than just the Ten Commandments. The law served to show why grace was necessary. It was a schoolmaster, defining the requirements and punishments, not so much the rewards, because following the law was not the path to those rewards. Is anyone justified by the law? Galatians 3.11 but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. In conclusion, backsliding begins with ego, placing one's wants over God's. This is the rejection of God's lordship in one's life. It ends with humility, realizing that we do and must answer to God for our deeds, and the recognition that God is the Lord of our life. While our downfallen condition can start many ways, it is only repentance that brings it to an end. God chastises those that are His. We should expect consequences for our actions. David was a miserable man while in that condition, but he never asked for his salvation to be returned. Even he knew that it was permanent. He just wanted salvation's joy to come back to him. Our misery is a reminder that God brings about our peace and our joy, and without Him, we are people most miserable. If we aren't, we need to have a self-examination just to make sure that our salvation is genuine. If it is, we can't lose it, and we'll get into more detail concerning that in the next lesson, the doctrine of the believer's security. Remember the words of King Solomon. Once a wise man, he learned lessons in life the hard way and did draw a proper decision, serving as words of wisdom for all, but pointedly to the backslider. Let us remember the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man.